All right, so I'm going to go ahead and walk through um, changes to the Mark Edit uh, 7.5 beta. Um, I'm going to use this in what's called Windows Sandbox. Um, if you haven't used it before, in Windows 10, um, it comes uh, with a version of what's called Windows Soundbox. You turn it on in the additional Windows functions, and it essentially allows you to start a fresh um, sandbox version of Windows uh, for testing software and whatnot. So this is a fresh version. So uh, a couple changes. So the changes I'm going to show you are the changes related to the installer. I'm going to show you changes um, related to plugins, and then I'm going to show you um, a um, option that I've turned on on the OCLC um, integration for folks who are looking to be able to uh, batch search things, kind of like you would find um, in the program's uh, Z3 950 tool. So let's start with the installer. So um, installer stayed the same size. Uh, in fact, got a little smaller. Uh, so the first change is here. Um, uh, rather than just installing the prerequisites by default, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you see which ones are there. So there are four um, prerequisites. Um, they will be, if you have them already installed, you won't see them. Um, essentially, there's the runtime files. I'm going ahead and as Microsoft uh, posts updates to the runtimes, um, I'm updating the root runtime. So that way, if you um, haven't gotten the updates through um, Windows Update, the tool will go ahead and update them for you. So um, Microsoft released uh, uh, 5.02. Um, the program in the last build installed 5.01. So I'm including the updated uh, runtime. So if you've picked it up through Windows Update, then those won't be there. But otherwise, in a fresh install, this is what you'd see. Uh, the, the last two are related to um, Plugins. So if you use the OCLC connection plugin, um, so that would be the plugin in Mark Edit that allows you to interact with connection, then you'd want to install these last two um, uh, uh, dependencies. And essentially what these dependencies do is they install um, a version of the Access Database Engine that allows Mark Edit in when running as a 64-bit application to interact with uh, Microsoft Access data files, uh, which is what the connection data format is, is behind the scenes. Um, in the past, you always had to install Mark Edit, um, it restart Mark Edit as a 32-bit app, and that's going to stop. Um, I would like to end that practice. So uh, we'll go ahead and say next. Uh, Mark edit embeds in the installer um, the two runtime files. Um, the other files are hosted on Microsoft sites, so the program will go ahead and go and download those um, from the web um, and bring them down for uh, for upload. Uh, while it's doing that, I am going to go ahead and quickly uh, get a um, get my file from connection real quick. So that way I can copy that over so I can show you how it works. So let me, while that's downloading, let me find the path to connection, which I don't know off the top of my head, but it should be right here. Let me make a copy of this. All right. Let those go away for now while this finishes and I'll paste this over here. Let's do it this way. Let me grab that. Just go to the location. That way I can take it off of the explorer. All right, let's close these back up. It's just the installer. Uh, do, do, do. Copy. Copy over here. Paste. Usually the download process works a lot faster, my guess is, since there's a lot of people in the house right now watching. TV, especially the um, Super Bowl and other stuff, um, that it's uh, taking it a little while to pick this file up. The file itself is only um, uh, 27 uh, megabytes. All right, so it's been downloaded, so now it's going ahead and 
doing the instructions and installation. This should look just like um, the previous version of the uh, of the application. It's going to install whatever prerequisites it decided are necessary. Um, if you're installing on a 32-bit machine, it would only install one of the runtimes, obviously the 32-bit version. Um, if you install on um, a 64-bit uh, version, right now it's installing both versions of the runtime, but that was partly because of the previous need to be able to run Mark Edit um, as a 32-bit app. Um, since that's probably going to go away, um, especially um, with the way that I've changed the plugin code, um, that requirement will go away. And so um, in the future, the program will um, only install just the framework version for whichever um, uh, bit type you're using. So let's go ahead and finish the process here. And so this should look like normal, like it did before, um, after you get through the dependency section. So um, program's gone ahead and uh, installed everything. Um, so one of the, the changes that was made um, specifically related to the plugins is that in order to um, allow MarkEdit to be able to be packaged as a single application at some point in the near future, um, I took all of the plugins and I folded them. If they're plugins I manage, I folded them into the application. If they're plugins, third-party plugins, there's a, a new plugins folder um, that will be used where, which is where the plugins will be stored. Um, I'll be documenting that process. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So this is going to pop up the wizard. I'm just going to skip all the stuff and go straight to um, opening the program. All right, so here we go. Uh, the program's here. So the first big change is in the plugins manager. So um, you'll notice that there is a difference here in the way it looked like before. Before the program would go out to an online source and it would try and and you would download plugins, you'd have to start the program, restart it, blah, 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 in order to get the plugins to install. Um, now, if you wanna run a plugin, um, you just go ahead and check uh, the plugins that you wanna use and save those. And then they're ready. Um, so Mark Edit is right now running um, as a 64-bit application. Uh, in previous versions of Mark Edit, so here's the 7.3. So let me go ahead and open 7.3. In previous versions of Mark Edit, so you can see the plugin there. This would be the process you would have had to have used if you'd have tried to open Mark Edit. Um, again, let me show you uh, just to put me in perspective here. Um, again, we're 64-bit. Uh, um, had you tried to run Mark Edit um, in uh, this instance, um, without installing um, any kind of special runtimes, when you tried to import this file, it would have broke. And so you had to go into the application and restart Mark Edit in 32-bit, and then the program would be able to read and um, access the database file. Um, in the current version, with the way the plugins have been, in, in, or the way the new plugins, the way they interact, um, we can go to... Um, tool here and go to plugins and to the OCLC plugin and go to the file. And so I copied the OCLC file to here and import it. And because the runtime was added to, was installed as part of the installation, now the program can interact with um, the access file, even though the program is running as a 64-bit application. So that's kind of cool. Um, but like I said, the big difference here is in the way that plugins work. Um, no longer are they downloaded and installed. Um, Third-party plugins will look a lot, will work probably a lot like the old versions, um, but I'm still documenting that process. So um, that's one big change. Uh, so let me let's show you the other one. The other change is related to how um, I turned on an option um, with the um, uh, OCLC search. So let me go ahead and import my settings that I copied over. All right, so now I've got my OCLC settings integrated from my previous versions. You see that turns on. Um, so MarkEdit uses the new OCLC API, search API. 
So that means a number of these options are available that weren't available in the past. Um, but the option that I added specifically here was batch search. So this works an awful lot like a Z390.50 search. I can um, go ahead and open a file. Those have OCLC numbers in them. So I tell them mark edit, I'm searching by OCLC number. I can add any limiters to the types of queries. So if I wanted to search and return OCLC numbers that were just cataloged by DLC or titles that were just cataloged by uh, Library of Congress or um, within a specific year, I can do that. I'm not gonna add any limiters and I'm gonna go ahead and search. Mark edit goes out it'll tell you um, that it's querying each term <clears throat> that's been passed in and the tool will go ahead and um, process the file and download it. Now this isn't going to be the fastest download in the world um, and it's partly because of the way that the, um, <clears throat> the way that the, the, um, the API works. Essentially it's doing a lot of um, XML integrate XML interactions in the background um, copying downloading and then translating a lot of XML data, but um, that process does allow you to, to do that kind of batch processing like you would have found in, in the previous version of the, um, or in the version of the Ethereum 50 client. Uh, so what other kind of changes happen? So if you're interested, um, the mark edit um, change log is found on the website. And you can see um, from downloads, uh, change log, and you can see here that these are the changes that were currently made um, in this particular version of the tool. Um, specifically, um, the plugins were converted, the plugin manager was changed, the installer was changed, 32-bit um, 30 um, restart has been hidden. Um, my intention is to deprecate it and remove it. Um, the uh, Mark SQL Explorer, which is kind of a tool that's in the application for um, allowing the import and then querying of data as SQL as an SQL source has been integrated into the primary application um, to reduce dependencies. Clustering tools have been fixed. They weren't working um, in the beta. They now work now. Um, and then um, just a few tweaks related to um, some bug fixes that were related to a few other things. So all of that stuff's been done um, with the application and is finished and ready for people to test. <clears throat>